Yo, what's up my friends? Travis Peters here with another great lesson about living the increase life. We're going to keep today's topic uh, simple and concise and we're going to be talking about faith and finances. If somebody comes up to me and, and says like, hey, what do you teach on? That's kind of my, that's kind of how I, I sum it up. I teach faith and I teach finances, how to put it together. Because here's what's cool is the principles and lessons I teach, stuff I'm going to show you, it, it's just their faith principles. They apply in any arena. What we're going to laser focus them in the area of finances, because as you've probably figured out by now, we live in an economic world and money matters. If you're telling yourself money doesn't matter, then you're lying to yourself. It's extremely important. Obviously, you don't have a house to live in without money. You didn't. You spent money to eat breakfast today, like to put gas in your car and get to your job so you can make more money. You've you've actually centered your entire life around making money, whether you realize it or not. Your job controls you. You've spent. You. you it's not just an eight-hour job because mentally, you're there in the evenings. You're mentally fighting stuff on the weekends or answering emails on your phone or, I mean, to be honest with you, the reason you get up in the morning when you get up in the morning is because your day centers around work to make money. I'm just saying money matters. We should just know that and be like, okay, cool. Since money's a factor, what does the Bible say about it? How can I use my faith for it? And this is a cool topic is thinking about it like this, I'm going to use my faith on purpose in order to increase financially. You know, we talk a lot about dominating your financial realm. Remember the commands, the original command, as soon as humans were made, God blessed them, looked at them, said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and dominate. Dominate, take over, one of the translations says. So let's take over the area of finances. Let's stop letting sinners dominate the area of finances. In most cases, they're beating us. They're crushing us when it comes to money. But God made all the silver and the gold is his. He made cattle on a thousand hills, meaning he made all the supply and resource. You think he made it and created it for those who don't even like him, love him, or trust him? Or for his people? He made it for us. We've given it up to the enemy uh, due to false teachings on money and that money is bad and all these different things that the Bible doesn't say, uh, unchallenged thoughts. We talk a lot about this inside of Kingdom Money Mastery. Uh, it's one of our flagship programs where we talk all about, we go deep into this stuff on, onto the limiting beliefs we've had about money, how to reprogram them, how to get rid of our limiting beliefs so that we can experience financial increase because I know you, you're going to do great stuff with your financial increase. You're going to bless a lot of people. You're going to pay people's houses off, pay people's cars off. You're that type of person when you go out to eat, you want to buy everybody's meal. But you were saying right now, I can't trap. Well, that's okay. You're going to, that's all going to change if you keep hanging out with me. All right. If this is your first time to the channel, please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, hit that bell because that's going to push this video out to more Christians. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps support me. I appreciate you. And, uh, Again, if you're new, head over to financialincrease101.com. I got a free guide that's showing you how to live the increased life, activate God's promises for increase found right here in his word. It's going to bless you. We need to get you out of uh, living paycheck to paycheck. We got to get you onto higher levels because God's got a lot of stuff he's going to do through you. But honestly, we're pretty limited if we're struggling financially. Which is why you're here today. So anyway, you're you're here because you want to learn how to go to the next level financially. Great job. Thank you for taking the effort to find these videos and lessons. Let's, let's just dive in. So uh, this is, I said, a topic near and dear to my heart. Uh, I get to teach this to my church. I've got the, the channel and the podcast. I put together all of these free resources for you. I've got books on the topic. I've got courses on the topic. I've got coaching programs on the topic. This is my calling is to help you crush it financially and do it in a way that honors God, do it in a way with character and integrity, and then let's grow financially, let's build wealth, and we're going to use that wealth to change the world. Deal? Sound good? You with me? Let's roll. Okay, so I could I could literally make an entire course on this, which I actually have. I have two courses on this, Kingdom Money Mastery and Increase University. Link's in the description below if you want to check those out. 
So let's just start with three scriptures. Three scriptures. There's so much more. It's kind of hard for me to narrow these down, but we're going to do it. Um, I, the, my criteria for the three scriptures I picked were the ones that have helped me the most, especially when I was just getting started. I still activate these scriptures today. I still use them. I still study them. I still meditate on them. I still speak them. I still believe them. I still use them. But these were like the first three that I kind of dove into when I was just getting started. I remember I've been interested in this topic for over a decade. Uh, I remember it's probably 14 years ago around there. I bought a house. I was 24. I bought a house um, and I had roommates living with me and I needed the roommates to help me pay the mortgage. Well, I lost my job like three months after buying the house, right? So I didn't panic. I just thought, you know what? I need to activate, this is my thought. I need to activate my faith for finances right now. God's got a solution for this. He's the whole, the Bible's full of solutions. So I just dove in. I started, I started uh, YouTubing and I started listening to a lot of Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Kenneth Copeland, all these people who had specific messages, trainings, and teachings on faith and finances. Let's see how God says to win financially. Let's find out his strategy for financial increase. And what I did is I just I just dove into it. Man, I got my Bible out. I was taking notes. I would literally fall asleep listening to preaching and teaching on faith and finances. Uh, it would play all night long. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be listening to it. I would take it with me. I'd listen to it in the shower. I was listening to it while I was cooking breakfast. I didn't have a job, but I'd listen to it bringing the car with me when I was running errands. Uh, I mean, I, I just kept that stuff pumping because I was feeding my faith, growing my faith for finances. A lot of you guys listening to this, it's what you need to do. You need to subscribe to my channel. You need to go to the podcast and you need to just feed on this stuff because everything you're going to hear me say is positive. It's full of faith. It's full of hope. It's full of love. And yeah, I'm a little bit direct because no one else in your life, especially in the Christian world, is being direct with you when it comes to money. I'm going to kick you in the butt a little bit so that you take the action steps you need to be taking so that you can get the new results you need to be getting. Now, I hope you don't mind. We're just going to go Coffee with Trav style. I'm not even going to edit that out. So let's go over here to Philippians 4. 19. This is a staple scripture that you need to have in your spirit, in your heart. You need to have this deep down inside you and believe the truth of this. So quick context, Paul is writing to the church, the Philippians, church of Philippi. And for the last two chapters, they've been talking about a financial money, monetary offering. Literally, you guys have been saying you're going to collect money I'm going to come pick it up. Or I'm going to send my guys. We're going to come pick it up. That's what it's about. It's not about spiritual wealth or riches. It is literally about money. Please go read it for yourself. Don't even take my word for it. Now, 419. He's talking about, hey, I see. I mean, you guys are giving big. You guys are awesome. Like, and here's what I need you to know about your gift. Like the financial gift you're giving us. Know this. That my God will liberally supply, fill until full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So what we can do, this is in the Amplified, what we can do is when we, when we hear something like that, we can say, that's for me. The same God, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, same God who supplied the Philippians' needs, saw that they were giving towards the church, giving towards the mission, and Paul said, hey, just so you know, because you're so generous, your gift, you're giving this money, my God's going to meet every need you have. Don't worry about it. Even if you feel like you were giving out of your poverty, which it talks about, if you feel like you're giving and it's like tough for you to give, don't worry. My God will fill to the full your every need. He's not going to let you go broke. He's not going to let you go under. He's got you. So we got to take the scripture and the way that we kind of feed on it is we make it first person. God, I thank you that you are filling every need I have. You are liberally, which means generously, more than you need. 
You are generously supplying my every need according to your riches and glory. That's his, that's his bank account according to his riches, his bank account, his supply, his storehouse. He's got you. Where we miss it as Christians is something happens or we look at our bank account and it flips negative and, you're, and what we say is, God, I thought you were going to supply. You didn't, you didn't do what you said. That's actually the wrong way to look at it. That's saying, I don't believe this, that I do not believe it's working. Because look at what my eyes see. But remember what the word says over and over. The just or the righteous will live by faith. They'll live by trust. I do not live by what I see. My bank account's negative, but I don't live by what I see. I've had my bank account negative many, many times in the past. And for long periods of time. But never once did I say, God, it's not working. God, you haven't blessed me. God, why aren't you doing you your part? Because I know God always does his part. There's an error. It's on me, not him. You need to make that distinction, all right? You need to make that perspective shift. So what I would say is, all right, Lord, my account's negative. You know that. I know that. But you promised to supply my every need and fill it to the full. I trust you. I thank you that you are supplying my need right now. Show me my part to play. If you got something for me to do, show me some instructions. I will do the action steps needed. I'll put in the work, I'll put in the effort. I'm not just going to sit on the couch. I'm going to go out there and, and do what you have me to do. And I thank you that you are meeting my needs. Now, you can use this scripture anytime. You can use scripture if you're trying to fall asleep at night and you're worried about money. Nope, I'm not going to worry about money because God said he'd meet my needs. God's got a plan. God's got a path. God's got a program. God's got something. He's going to give me, uh, maybe he'll, he'll send you overtime hours from your boss. Maybe he'll give you a business idea to go start. Maybe he'll, he'll, something's going to happen. All right, but you got to trust God and get to the spot where I don't worry about money because I truly believe that God meets my needs. Now, this is this can take work and effort. You've got to go put in the effort to build your faith on these finances, and you do that, like I said, by reading them, saying them out loud, and listening to sermons on these topics. Again, please just listen to my stuff. Go over to the podcast, or or if you're watching this on YouTube. Hit the videos button and you'll see I've put in a ton of work and I put in an entire library of stuff, uh, videos for you to watch and to listen to that will build your faith for finances. My free stuff is better than most people's paid stuff. Please go check it out. I put a lot of work into it. I love you guys. All right. Now, let's go back to Malachi 3 verse 10 because I'm showing you the scriptures that are foundational to having faith for finances and having your faith work on purpose in the area of finances. And I'm gonna be real, if you're not doing this one right here, you're <laughs> you're kind of screwed. I'll be honest with you. Like, oh man, did you say yeah, yeah. You you need people like me in your life, okay? Listen. Let's look at verse 8. Now, context is when in the Old Testament, this is before the Holy Spirit came into us, the Old Testament, God spoke to his people through prophets. So when a prophet spoke, it was the same as God coming down in human form and speaking it. So God's speaking through the prophet Malachi, saying to the people, will a man rob God? Yet you're robbing me. But you say, in what ways have we robbed you? In tithes and the offerings that you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me. Yes, this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the tenth of your income, into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there's no room to receive it, then I will rebuke the devourer, insects, and plagues for your sake. And he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will your vine in the field drop its grapes before the harvest, says the Lord of hosts. All nations will call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of delight. So these are the benefits and the perks that come with tithing. Let me read it from the New Living Translation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, the tenth of your income, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, here's a condition. If you do that, says the Lord of heaven's armies, 
I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease, the devourer. Your grapes will not fall, fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight. These are the perks and benefits of being a tither. Now, a lot of you guys don't want to tithe, so you don't want to because you're afraid you can't afford it. So you say all these things like, oh, tithing's Old Testament trap. Oh, tithing's not required under the New Covenant. All these things. Please go watch my, I've got an entire series here on YouTube where I break down tithing um, super quick. Tithing was actually 400 years before the law was given. So your argument there is gone. Um, it is no, tithing is not required. Nobody is actually saying tithing is required for you to go to heaven. It is not. You will still go to heaven. But I believe if you do not tithe, you will live like hell on earth. A lot of you guys have been broke and broke for years. Travis, I'll do anything you say. I just want to tithe. All right, cool. I'll see you in the next 20 years when you're exactly where you're at and you got the same $200 in your savings account. And you're still not living out your purpose and you still feel like every time you get ahead, something happens and you get behind again. You're still living paycheck to paycheck. I can be bold like this because I've been having these conversations for over 15 years with people and it's the same story over and over and over. Anyone who opposes the tithe and I can almost predict what your life is like. So just be real. I'll be real with you. Please, listen. Go study this for yourself. Here's all, here's all it is, dude. The tithe was set up. Put it like this. I'm going to keep it ultra simple. Please go watch my other videos. I break it down a lot deeper. Super simple. Uh, way before the law. Like I said, 400 years before the law. One of the first incidents of tithing was Abraham had a battle. God gave him instructions on how to win the battle. Abraham won the battle, and because he did, he got to take all the enemy spoils, all the gold and silver, all the uh, cattle and land and houses and all the stuff. And he was so thankful. God, thank you for giving this victory, giving me victory over my enemies. Thank you for the instructions. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. I have to bless you back. I'm going to give 10%. Who can I give 10% to? I'm going to give 10% of this to the high priest, Melchizedek. Yeah, that's the guy representing you right now, like the high priest on the earth right now. I'm going to go give that to him, and, and that's this is my offering to you. It was a love offering. That's all tithe is. God, thank you for this job you gave me. He got you that job. You know that, right? God, thank you for this job. Man, here's 10% of my income. Thank you for getting this to me. Uh, we, you sell a car, and you it gets you a big profit. Lord, here's 10% of my income. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, giving me this overtime, giving me this business, this business idea. Thank you for putting these investments together. Whatever it is, it's just a love offer. God, thank you. For the rest of my life, I will tithe 10% of my income. I've Since I was 19 and I found out what it was, and in, in, I guess earlier than that, uh, probably when I was about 16, when I found out what tithing was, I've tithed my entire life. I've never been late on a payment. I've never missed anything. I've never been behind. Never, to be honest with you, money's never really even been that tight for me. There's a small, like, three month window when my wife and I got married where money seemed a little bit tight, but it wasn't that big of a deal, to be honest with you. Like I said, before that, there were times when my bank account went upside down a couple of times, but God always just came right through. I never missed a payment. I was never late on anything. I still was able to pay my rent. I still was able to pay any, my car note and all the bills I had back then. It still all got paid. God came through every single time. Why? Because I'm a tither. And he rebukes the devourer for my sake. My crops were still abundant because I believe this. See, again, the misnomer is when something bad happens financially and we say, God, you said you'd bless me. I tithe, but it doesn't work. Well, you're literally saying, I don't have faith in your word, God. I don't believe you're saying what you're saying is true because obviously look at my bank account. Obviously, you didn't rebuke the devourer for my sake. We have to believe that no matter what, even if it doesn't line up with our eyeballs, that God is doing what he said he would do. God always comes through. Sometimes it feels like he comes down to right to the wire. Sometimes it feels like he goes a little bit past the wire for you in your own, in your own natural thinking. But he always comes through. Always. God, I thank you that you are rebuking the devour off my life 
off my money, off my business, off my stuff. When it talks about here, like your fruit not falling immature from the vine, that has to do with like businesses and stuff. Because think about it back then, the way they made money was they farmed. So they went and made grapes and then they had to go take those grapes to the market and sell them. Well, here it's saying, um, if your grapes fall immature from the vine, those aren't sellable grapes. You can't sell those. It was like a bad crop or bad harvest. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen to you anymore. And then it goes down and it says, the nations will call you blessed for your land will be such a delight. People need to be looking at your life and being like, that guy's life looks amazing. Why? So I, I've literally had this happen to me like in the, the perfect scenario, like exactly how you'd like it to happen. Uh, I remember at not even this house, this isn't a better, bigger house in a better neighborhood, but at my old house, uh, I had two door to door salesmen come up to me and they were doing their little pitch and they saw how young I was. This is pre beard. So I look like I'm like 19 years old, uh, pre beard. And they were like, wait, how do you own this house? You're so young. And I literally said, have you ever heard of tithing? And they were like, I think so. I explained what it was. I got them some waters. We started talking and I led both of them to the Lord. Two men with families are going to heaven and they probably got the rest of their families going to heaven. Going to heaven now because my land looked like a delight. Why did it look like a delight? Because I've been a tither. I'm just saying, if you are one of the people watching this and you're like, I'm, I'm refused to tithe, okay. It's not required. You don't have to. But you also don't have to live with these benefits. We can watch, you ever felt like your money's gotten devoured? Every time you get paid, it just dwindles away. It's just gone. You're not walking in these benefits. Does it feel like the windows of heaven are closed above your life? It seems like you don't get the opportunities other people get. Don't get the promotions. Don't get the raises. Don't get the ideas. Don't get the stuff. You miss out on these things. You're watching other people prosper, but you're like, why isn't it working for me? Check your tithe. Check your words. Check your faith. All right. Now, let's go to one more scripture. There's so many I could go to. We're going to go to one more for this video, and then I'll probably have to make lots more videos on this to cover it all. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Again, these are my favorite scriptures. Okay, I'll just say three of my favorite scriptures because I just thought of like three more that are my favorite. These are the ones I've used, and I want you to use these as well. Start with these. This is 2 Corinthians 9, verses, really verse 8, but I really want to start at verse 6, and I'm just going to read through it real quick. In the Amplified. This is the one I've used. I printed it off. I made it first person. I'd speak it every single day over my life, multiple times. Now, remember this. So 2 Corinthians 9, this is, this is uh, again, in the same context like Philippians, kind of the same deal where he's talking about a financial gift that they are making, that the church is making. Remember this. He who sows sparingly. So he's relating giving money to sowing seed. All right? That's the that's what they knew at the time. That's how they made their means. That's how they made their living back then was sowing seed, literally like a farmer. So he's relating money in the kingdom to sowing seed. So he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Sow a little, get a little. He who sows generously, that blessings may come to others, will reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he's decided in his heart, not grudgingly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, the Amplified Classic here says, God loves a, a cheerful, heartfelt, prompt to do it giver. Like quick, he's quick to get prompt to do it. And it says he's unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful giver. He will not abandon you. I can't do it without you. I'm unwilling to do this without you. I need you. That's what he's saying. The giver, the giver. Not the perfect person who never sins, but a cheerful giver. Whew, that's a big deal. And then here's where it gets really good. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing. Do you think earthly blessing includes money? Of course it does. What else would earthly blessing? Not spiritual riches. Earthly blessing. He will make it come to you in abundance. So more than you need. So that, here's the reason, you may always 
under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything. Have all you need. You will be completely self-sufficient in him. And you will have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. He's just saying, I'm going to make all grace, favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so you have all you need and more so that you can meet your needs and still give to every good work and act of charity. It goes on in verse 10. Now he who provides seed for the sower, talking about God, provides seed for you to sow, and bread for your food, so seed for what you need in the future, bread for what you need now, will provide and multiply your seed for sowing. That is your resources. Money. It's not, it's not mystical here. Like it's literal. It's obvious. Go read this for yourself, please. I'm telling you. And increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself an act of goodness, kindness, and love. You will be enriched in every way so that you may always be generous. I look up the word enrich. Guess what it means? To be made rich. You will be made rich in every way so you can always be generous. What a great way to live. These are the scriptures that I took and, like I said, printed them off, typed them up, made them first person, printed them off, and would walk around my office speaking these over my life every morning and sometimes throughout the day if I could feel my faith, if I was like starting to get worried about something or concerned about money or something, I'd go build my faith again. I'd go build my faith. God, I thank you that right now you are making all grace, favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that no matter the need, no matter the circumstance, I will be self-sufficient. I will have all I need and I'll have extra to give to every good work. You are making me rich so I can always be generous. Man, I speak that over and over and over again. Unexpected bill in the mail, go speak that. Uh, I had some situations where my tax lady messed some stuff up and then I owed the IRS $10,000. I'm speaking this thing. Every single time, God comes through. It doesn't always happen quick. Sometimes it feels like God comes down to the wire or a little bit what we would call past the wire, but it always comes through, and I know that. I've developed my faith for that. I'm trying to get you to develop your faith for that. That way you don't lose sleep about money. You don't fight with your spouse about money. You're not a distracted person. You can focus on what God has for you. When we're distracted Christians, we're not effective Christians. A lot of us are distracted because of money. A lot of us are leaving our church because we because of a job. So now I'm going to get a job where I have to work Wednesdays and Sundays and you're being distracted. You're missing it. Or you're moving to another city and now you live too far away to go to the church God had for you. You're putting, you get priorities out of whack. You're putting money first and God second. No, God comes first. I'm going to, I'm going to have to make more videos on this topic because I've got so much more I need to say and we're running out of time here. So let's start with those three. All right. Uh, Philippians 4, 19, Malachi 3, 10 and 11. And then 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, really. Study these things. Look them up in the Amplified. I like the Amplified Classic. It's my favorite. You can find it on Bible Gateway or YouVersion app or, man, go get the physical Bible. If you haven't looked at a physical Bible in a while, please pull it up. Look at these scriptures. Get your highlighter out. Look, I'm still doing this stuff. We're still doing highlighting. We're still doing notes. You got to. It It's... It shows that you really want to develop in this stuff. Don't you? Aren't you tired of living the way you're living? Aren't you tired of living broke and paycheck to paycheck? Aren't you tired of not having enough? Aren't you tired of not being able to be generous like God wants you to be generous? Aren't you tired of just existing? Man, let's put some work into this thing. Let's put some effort into this stuff. Let's go to develop our faith. Build our faith for your finances. If you want more of this, go to Kingdom Money Mastery. I've got the link below. You can try it out. I put it together for a reason. It's hyper-focused step-by-step what to do in order to increase your faith for finances. But then it shows you practical stuff too. How to master your money, how to manage your money, how to multiply your money, and just crush it in the area of finances. It's available to anybody. All right, use the link in the description below. Let's dive in. Let's develop our faith. Let's go make a lot of money and let's go change the world. You in? All right, click below. I love you guys. See you on the inside.